Well, hello, lovely friends, and thank you for joining me for this video. I've been having a lot of trouble over the last couple of weeks with my editing software, so I haven't been able to produce an Astro Weather Report for you this week, unfortunately. However, this video is what you will get when you are part of my Patreon family. You get a video on the new moon each month and the full moon each month and a special deep dive into astrology. This month we took a look at the astrology of mental health in the horoscope. We're also next month going to be doing a live discussion, question and answer between all the family members who wish to join. It'll be a coffee session and a chat, sharing and talking about astrology. So I hope we can see you there. But this video is usually what is, as I said, what's reserved for my patrons, my patron family at Guiding Star. If you would like to be a member of the Patreon family, all you need to do is go to the link in the description below and join up for, for as little as the price of a coffee per month. It's a really good deal. My patrons this month will be receiving a very special Moon Health PDF that details all the uh, ways we can work with the Moon to ensure that our health is vital and that we can make the most of the lunar cycles. So I do hope they won't mind me sharing their exclusive video with my online YouTube community because I don't have a video to share otherwise and I'm hoping I can get my software issues sorted out fairly quickly so this doesn't happen again. So a big thank you to my Patreon family for sharing their exclusive video with the online community this week and you'll have your free Moon Health PDF that you'll receive along with this particular video if you are a Patreon member. A big thank you to my friends who've loaned me their equipment to do this little segment. And now without further ado, let's cut to the actual video for this week's New Moon. Welcome my lovely Patreon family and a big kiss to you all. Mwah. Thank you for joining me for this video all about the New Moon in Pisces this week. Along with this video, you're getting a free Moon Health PDF and it is fantastic. It's going to cover when the right time is to do cleanses, to do, you know, juice fasts and things like that. How to work with Moon Health and, and what to eat at certain times, certain phases of the Moon, when the Moon's in certain signs. How can you make the most of the energy for your body's um, vitality and your body's best interest? How to diet with the Moon, how to use the moon to up level your emotional self, how to work with the moon energy in every possible way to give you a better physical journey. So check out that free PDF that you have been given and enjoy. Don't forget next month we're getting together for an astro chat. Can't wait to see you all there. The details and the links will be sent to you shortly so that you'll know what times and what day to set aside for that. But start writing down your questions, start writing down your astro queries and we'll try and cover them all and discuss them together. But you know what, if you can't make it to the actual Astro Chat, and that may be the case for a lot of people because of the time zone differences between Australia and the rest of the world. If you can't make it to the Astro Chat, don't worry, it's going to be uploaded onto um, the Patreon family website and you'll be able to revisit it. If you have any questions that you want me to address, if you can't make it and be there yourself, then make sure you either email them to me or send me a message through Patreon. I'll do my best to cover them. I'm, I'm not guaranteeing that I'm going to cover them all, but certainly um, if you send me your questions, we can take a peek at them if there's time. Now, before we get into this week's moon report, I just want to say a big thank you to Sabina. Can you see my earrings here? Aren't they beautiful? Um, I hope they're coming up on the camera okay. Um, but uh, I want to say a big thank you to my gorgeous friend and follower and patron member here, Sabina, for her beautiful gift. I treasure these. I love them. Thank you, my darling. I appreciate it greatly. So what about this week's new moon in Pisces at 23 degrees of the sign of Pisces? And ta-da, there we have all of a sudden on the board the astro weather for this week. So what is unfolding? What does it look like? Well, this new moon is a very beautiful new moon. It's going to be quite romantic, ethereal, quite delightful actually. And it's not just because it's falling in Pisces that it's going to have these qualities to it. If we take a look here, you can see down in Pisces, sorry, I'll move my arrow. 
You can see in Pisces we've got the Sun with the Moon, which is your typical new moon, obviously. But there's also Neptune in conjunction as well. And there is also Venus in a conjunction also. So two very ethereally, well, Neptune's the ethereal one, Venus is a little bit more earthly. But these two are similar in that Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. They're both, they have connections in a sense to love. And one is more divinely inspired kind of love and the other is the earthly bound love. But Venus, sorry, Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And here they're all getting together in Neptune's sign, Pisces. So it's going to be quite a powerful new moon for anyone with a lot of Pisces in their chart um, or anyone with a lot of 12th house type energy or a strong Neptune. Now, not only that, we are, and I hope I can draw this okay, we're going to be having a sextile between Pluto down here in Capricorn, and I'll have to go through the rest of the other planets to get here. But that's a sextile, I hope you can see that, to Pluto. So we're having quite some connections in the positive sense with this lovely, lovely new moon. Now, uh, currently Pluto is at a roughly 26 degrees of Capricorn. This conjunction of the moon and the sun is occurring at 23 degrees. So there's only a three degree, what we call an orb between the two. And also we've got uh, Neptune at 20 degrees and Venus at 19. So they're within three degrees as well. So quite a tight little grouping here that we're having. So this new moon is fabulous for all things Piscean and wherever Pisces happens to fall in your chart. So it's very loving, it's very dreamy, it's very spiritual and quite romantic too. So if you're in a position to enjoy those sorts of things, you're going to really feel it strongly this week. So what is the new moon in Pisces all about? Let's explore that to begin with. Well, it's every new moon is a new start, a chance to turn over a new leaf and make a new beginning. And we're going to talk more about this um, in a minute, how we can do this most effectively and how we can work with this energy most effectively. This new moon in Pisces is a time for wishing on a star, quite literally, <laughs> and, um, and also figuratively. So if you want to daydream about your longings, because Neptune is longing, Pisces is longing, what are your longings in your life? What are your dreams in your life? Go there, feel them, dig deep into them, because this energy wants us to face or focus rather on our wishes and our dreams. So if you want to sit out under the stars and wish on a star that you see, by all means, this is the energy for it. Enjoy. But even if you don't do that, keep visioning, keep dreaming, keep sort of imagining what you want and what life could be like for you, because that's what this is all about. The other thing is that this is a sign very much connected to trust, trusting in the divine, not trusting in men or women or, or other people or even trusting in ourselves. It's actually about trusting in the love of the divine to support us, to provide what we need, to send us the right circumstances or the right people. It's about trust. So tap into that energy now, trusting in the divine. The universe is asking you to trust in it, in it, in its energy, in the energy of love in the universe, so that your dreams can come true. Now, we all know the old sort of, you know, law of attraction principles, you know, the more you put it out there in the vortex and what have you, this is my dream, this is my goal, this is my desire, the more the universe can respond to what you are visioning, dreaming, imagining. Well, it's kind of like that, but but it's not so much, okay, it's up to me to put it in the vortex, you know, as they say. It's up to me to do that. It's up, if, if I haven't got the right energy, if I'm not at this certain level of, you know, vitality and um, vibration, then it's not going to happen. No, it's not up to you. Pisces energy says, trust that the, you put your message out to the divine, you pray or you give it over to the divine and you trust. The divine's got it in its hands. It will bring things about, your wishes, your dreams, when the timing is right. And you've got to learn to trust and let go with this energy, not force it to happen, not, you know, try and get in the right vibration to make something happen for you, to manifest it for you. And if it doesn't manifest, well, then obviously you weren't in the vi right vibration and you suck. That is not what this is all about at all. It is trusting in the divine 
and trusting in the divine's timing to bring you what you want. So pray, put your wishes and dreams out there to the universe and above all, trust and let go of attachment to that thing happening when you want it to happen. Trust in the divine timing. But it's also about trust in your own intuition as well. Trusting in your, you know, your gut feeling, your, your connection to the higher self. Not about logic, not about what's going on in the head. If you have ever had a reading with me, you will know I always start my readings by saying, I want you to trust your intuition. Forget the logic. Forget the thinking, thinking, thinking process, the, the monkey mind. Put that aside and listen to your gut. Observe your body's reactions. Trust what you're feeling, what you're intuiting. And that's what this new moon is asking us to do as well. So trust in the divine and trust in the intuition and the, the bodily reactions and responses that we are seeing indicating where we're at. You know, if we get a message, if something wonderful happens and we feel all excited about it and you know, our initial response is joy, trust that response. If our initial response to something happening to us is, oh, I don't really like the feel of that, even though the circumstances are great, it doesn't feel right. This is about learning to trust those instincts too. The other thing that we can do at this time is to examine our fears because Pisces and Neptune and the 12th house, they all have this connection to loss and loss is not always bad. Loss is about letting things go. And so we really, with this new moon energy, have the opportunity to lose what we don't want to let go of what is no longer serving us, what is holding us back, maybe something from past lives, Pisces, 12th house, Neptune energy is very past life oriented. And how can we let go of the past that is keeping us and self-sabotaging us from our success in the here and the now? So we're called to look at our fears. Recently, now this is not a plug, I'm not getting any kickback from this, but um, recently I purchased a game called The Wish Game and uh, I played it with my best friend and we had such a great time and it was terrific, but it called me to examine a certain wish that I have had and for quite a number of years now and examine why it wasn't coming true. What are the blockages to that wish manifesting in my life? And of course, it had everything to do with fear. My fear of, you know, what, what it would be like if I got my wish. Crazy thing to be afraid of, but oh my goodness, that was the, at the crux. And it was through playing this game that I discovered that is a fear in me and I didn't even know that it was there. So you can get the game if you want to. <laughs> I wish I was getting a commission for it, but hey. Um, but or you could just sit with a friend or journal or do something that, that causes you to examine what your wishes and dreams are. Remember, this is the new moon of wishing on a star. This is the time of looking at your wishes and what is holding you back from achieving those wishes. What are the fears there? What are the hesitations? What If you want to be a public speaker, if you want to be the next Oprah Winfrey, what's holding you back from having a crack at that? You know, if you want to, if you want to start a podcast and that's your wish, that's your dream, what's holding you back from doing that? Maybe you are afraid uh, that people will think your voice is ridiculous. Maybe you're afraid that if you start a YouTube channel, everybody's going to, you know, hate on you and, oh my goodness, I could never cope with that. Um, you know, what is it that's holding, your back, holding you back from achieving your wishes and dreams? Explore that now and this new moon can help us let it go say sayonara to that. The new moon in Pisces is also about asking the divine to heal us. Now, maybe that's to heal us of our self-sabotaging behaviors. Maybe that's to heal us of our attitudes that are holding us back. Maybe that's to heal us of our fears. It can also be physical healing as well, because this is a healing um, sign. All the water signs have that capacity, particularly um, the Scorpio and Pisces energy. Virgo is another sign too that's very connected to healing. Um, but here we can heal from our fears and all those things I mentioned, but also we can experience, and I'm not going to guarantee this, <laughs> but we can experience divine healing of the body as well. This will all depend on where the planets are falling in your natal chart and how this new moon is affecting them. Keep that in mind, but for some people, it can be a time of praying for healing and actually manifesting healing in the body, working with this energy. So your prayers can be miraculously answered now. 
So let's pray, you know. And if you're not into the term prayer because it does have all sorts of connotations with religion and so forth, then maybe it's meditating on a certain topic that that is the right phrase for you. Um, Or, or, you know, setting intentions is a form of prayer as well. There's so many different phrasings that we use now to describe giving over our needs and our wishes and desires to the universe. And then, as I said, having faith for the timing and the manifestation of what it is we are praying for, wishing for, intending, using all those terminologies. So let's take a look at some of the influences. So that's that's what um, the new moon, in, new moon in Pisces themes are. But what about the influences of this particular new moon falling at 23 degrees of Pisces? Well, Sun conjunct Neptune for a start is a time of illumination. The, the Sun illuminates. The sun brings light and it's bringing light to Neptunian Pisces like themes now. So this comes uh, illumination that's coming from the divine, not from, you know, someone, you know, can see something and they point it out in us or whatever, although that could be divinely inspired. Don't get me wrong. But really, it's about the, you know, goosebumps and the the sudden aha moments that come from the divine or the sudden creative inspiration that we get or the sudden spiritual connection that we feel you know um i grew up as most people know in a very religious environment and i won't deny that a lot of the time there's a lot of emotive language used in the church services, the worship time and all that sort of thing to get people into that right energy to feel um, buzzed, I guess. So there's, you know, there's a strategy there with with how they they do it in church. Um, And this is very much Sun and Neptune because it's about connecting with the divine and feeling that sense of illumination and that vitality and that buzz that comes with that very spiritual moment that feeling of enlightenment. So this is a big part of what could play out for some people during this new moon in Pisces. They suddenly get that spiritual connection to the divine that makes them their heart sing and their soul soar. Those sorts of um, highly emotive experiences can actually come through this illumination sun with Neptune. But also we can get psychic insights because Neptune is to be very psychic and the new moon Um, The moon is very uh, psychically attuned as well. And we've got the sun involved in a conjunction with these. Like It's just psychic hits on steroids. (laughs) So very powerful for that at this time. Heightened spiritual life, which I've already kind of described just then. And vivid dreams as well. So I noticed that um, already a lot of people are coming to me and saying, oh my goodness, Ksenia, I'm just, my dreams are off the Richter scale. And some of them are really beautiful. Some of them are really scary. Some of them are really romantic. I'm getting all sorts of dreams now vivid dream life under this energy is to be expected and it's often will correlate to past lives because that's what Pisces is all about it's the final house when we're looking at the traditional makeup of the horoscope it's the final house I'll try and explain that for you here just a minute when Aries is the rising sign, and we, we take Aries as the first sign of the zodiac usually, when the sun moves into Aries, it's considered the beginning of the soul, um, sorry, the astrological year. So when Aries is the rising sign, Pisces is the final sign, and it deals with what came before our current incarnation, Aries. What came before our current incarnation? Pisces. And so it's past lives. What happened before we we began this journey around the horoscope? So Pisces is connected to past lives. And when the new moon is in Pisces with the ruler of Pisces, Neptune in this way, then our dreams can be actually very cathartic and they may well be coming you know, energies coming from past lives where we are we are actually dispersing them. Our psyche is processing them and releasing them through our dream life so if you have a scary dream shake it off and let it go don't get too perturbed by it as much as possible I mean I say that but I woke up the other night in quite a state with a horrid dream that I had Um, it takes a while to calm down again but just know it is the psyche dealing with perhaps past life horrors that you've experienced 
maybe past life joys that you want to reintegrate there is that processing that occurs through our dreams just welcome it allow it to be there don't judge what you dream don't judge yourself just realize it is part of the healing process that comes with the sun conjunct neptune in this new moon period now obviously Neptune is also in a conjunction with the moon at this time. It's a conjunct with the sun, conjunct with the moon. This is very powerful when you've got a celestial planet like Neptune making its annual conjunction with the sun at the same time as the moon is there. Whoa, look out. It's like Neptune Pisces energy on steroids as I said but when we have a conjunction of Neptune and the moon and this goes for if you have it in your natal chart as well it often brings more compassion you're a more compassionate person so we can expect people to be feeling more compassionate um, under this energy more sensitive to the moods and feelings of others um, Neptune energy Pisces energy is very devoted and we are very caring and concerned types of people if we have these energies strong in our chart with the well-being of other people so we're sensitive we feel the hurts of others we feel you know we're watching an ad on telly and it's emotive and what have you and we've noticed a tear running down our face that's Neptune Pisces they're just so sensitized to the emotions and the feelings and the um, the struggles of other people as well so expect that you might feel this way under this new moon too even if you're not Pisces Neptune 12th house strong uh, personality types now for some people depending on the configuration of your personal chart you might actually get an opportunity to move under this energy because Neptune and the moon um, do have that connotation because Neptune is far away and Pisces is far away as well far, far away things things that are more isolated so and the moon is where we live so for some people who are getting a strong activation from this new moon in their natal chart this is going to indicate that you might move maybe to a more isolated place maybe to somewhere overseas somewhere foreign even in it like in your own country but in a sort of more foreign environment these things can manifest for some people under this energy too and of course Neptune rules soulmates it rules unconditional love and Pisces is unconditional love as well and so don't be surprised for some people if you meet your soulmate if you meet an um or a, even if it's not a soulmate and how do we tell if people are our soulmates really um I, i'm not the biggest believer in soulmates but i'm happy for the universe to prove me wrong at some point in my life if it would like to <laughs> but an unconditional love can enter our life because that's very piscean very neptunian where somebody comes into our life and they don't judge they're accepting and we don't judge them we're accepting of them there are no boundaries you know you could be with someone who's 20 years older than you or 20 years younger than you there's no boundaries here no sort of rules and regulations about what is a good relationship and what is acceptable and what is what will we consider as being worth loving and that kind of goes out the window we can have relationships enter our life now that are much more unconditional and that's a beautiful thing because we want to connect soul to soul with a partner and not sort of play on that earthly playing field of you must look a certain way and you must have a certain amount of money and all that kind of bullshit. So for some people, new love can enter. Now, you've probably seen that I promoted last week on my Astro Weather Report that I am running a course on how to tell when love's going to come into your life. So if you would like to know about that, then perhaps scoot over to my Learn Astrology page on my website, guidingstarastrology.com, and place your order for the will, uh, When Will Love Come course, which will give you all the insights to know whether you are in the, the stars aligning phase for a love to come into your life. And then when this hits, boom, it all happens for you. Now the moon is popularity. And under this new moon, and the sun's where we shine as well. So under this new moon, you may just find that if you are in a Neptunian style career, your popularity can soar. So that might mean you're an artist, you're in costume design, you are in film or photography, uh, maybe you are involved in some sort of spiritual work and, and sharing spiritual messages of upliftment with people in some way, shape or form. You know, and maybe you're even Neptune has connections to advertising and it also has connections to farming. A lot of people don't realize that, but it does. So you might find that your success and popularity in those fields now, and they're just some of the fields Neptune is associated with, can actually boom. 
And so it's a good time if you are an, in one of those Neptunian fields to really put your best foot forward, um, promote your work, share your work, advertise your work and what you're doing because this new moon could bring you more response, more popularity, more success. Now we've already said that this is a new moon for healing old past soul wounds and that includes from early childhood as well that can happen with this energy too. But it's not just because the moon is in Pisces that this is a thing, it's also because Neptune and the moon are together which also sort of amp up that potential as well. So it's truly lovely if you are looking to heal some old soul wounds. Now, of course, not everything is sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. It is also the potential is here for a shadow side of this energy to display. So we do need to still watch out for deception, um, victim mentality, oversensitivity to things and, and therefore overreaction to things, codependent circumstances popping up in our lives. That's another thing to watch out for. Uh, giving to the point of martyrdom where, you know, we just want everybody to love us. So we will, you know, shout everybody at the bar and then we're broke for the next week. You know, that sort of over giving kind of energy. And certainly martyrdom is part of that being lost, lost in an illusion. These are all the shadow sides to Pisces and Neptune. And of course, the one that everybody talks about, which to be honest, I have seen through many other configurations in the chart, not just Pisces, not just strong Neptune, is addiction. It happens from many different triggers in the chart. Pluto plays a pretty big part to play and so does Rahu in a lot of alcohol addictions. So, you know, I, I'm not annoyed that people always point the finger at Pisces or Neptune. Um, let me explain what that is. Neptune, Pisces and 12th house energies are about escaping the harshness of reality that really is unbearable. And I, as a Pisces strong person, I, my constant longing, because that's the issue with Pisces and Neptune and so on, constant longing to return to my, the safety of childhood or um, as some people refer to it, the, the safety of the womb before we were even born or to go to that far off paradise that we, uh, you know, if we're very religious, you know, we're like, oh, heaven, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's very Piscean and Neptunian because it's all about getting away from, I can't stand, you know, the harshness of reality and the cruelty of people and the, the evil and the corruption and the, it's, it's unbearable. And so, People with strong Pisces or Neptune will uh, and will be feeling that at this time as well, the same kind of energy like, oh, it's too much. Earthly reality sucks. And we will be wanting to escape in some way. And we can do that in many ways. Alcohol and drugs are just two of the ways. And that's why um, people often point the finger at Pisces and Neptune in the 12th house for people with drug addictions and um, alcohol addictions and so on. But there's many more combinations that can indicate it as well, because the crux of the matter is we want to escape from the harshness of reality. We want to, um, you know, run away. So I do that with with books and films a lot. Um, I tap out into my imagination constantly. My kids are always like, mom, 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 three times in a row before they even, oh, I come out of my revere, <laughs> reverie or whatever it's called, <laughs> lost in my head. Um, I'm often, you know, tapping out of reality in order to cope. So we do it in many, many ways. And um, we might find that that's a bit of a thing under this new moon energy. It's, it's increased, that energy is strengthened as well as all the good stuff. What about Venus and Neptune? Well, this is a lovely annual connection um, of Venus and Neptune, and it is considered by some to be the most romantic energy of the year because both of these planets have to do with romanticism. Now, admittedly, Venus is the energy of the practical romanticism in the earthly realm. Going on dates, getting nice prezzies, having good food together, doing those luxurious, fun things, pleasurable things that is dating and that is romance. Venus is very sensual and tactile. It is immersed in the earthly reality. And when it combines with Neptune, who carries the energy of the ethereal, unconditional love, divine status of love, that's why I say this can be a new moon when we meet soulmates, if the rest of our chart is aligning. Because Neptune is the ethereal divine connection of the soul and the heart, while Venus is the connection of the sensual side, the physical realm. 
So both of these coming together, it is the most considered to be the most romantic day of the year and it's happening under the Pisces um, new moon this year. Um, my God, it's going to be really special for a lot of people who have the right chart configurations to benefit from this. So it's a wonderful amplification of love and romance and all the good things that we see with, um, with Pisces energy. But also, again, there's a shadow side. We need to be very wary of being taken advantage of or being deceived in love. Now, there are no hard aspects happening with this con um, this conjunction. As I said, there's only one sextile coming from Pluto. So that's a really good signal to me that there's going to be much less of the deception, being deceived by someone, having the wool pulled over our eyes. That's going to be less than the positive expression we're going to experience, which is great. So expect the best with this particular um, lovely new moon. It is, of course, Neptune conjunct um, uh, Venus is a beautiful energy for creativity as well. So expect that you are going to get a lot out of your creative works under this this energy at this time. So that might mean that you know you are going to be able to do art therapy, music therapy, dance therapy and actually have big breakthroughs that happen for you because of that at this time. Or if you are in a creative industry, you're going to do fantastic work, inspired work under this energy. Um, and creation of things, particularly because there's an aspect from Pluto, your creative works, your um, creative endeavors can actually bring powerful transformation for you because that's what Pluto is all about. Pluto is transforming, regenerating, rebirthing, and you can have a rebirth process through your creative work. So get out the, the pencils and paper or the paints, get out the cross stitch, get out the um, woodwork tools, whatever you do as a creative endeavor, get your dancing shoes on. Like, make the most of this energy because it could give you a, a massive transformation and a massive breakthrough from blockages, from things that have held you back, from not being as successful as you want to be, from wherever life is feeling stuck for you, you can actually transform it and break through now through using your creative self and expressing your creative side, even privately. It doesn't mean you know you go out and sing busking in the main street or something like that. If you're singing in your shower as you get <laughs> getting ready in the morning, that's it. That's you expressing the artistic side of yourself. It doesn't matter if it sounds like crap, you know, you're still doing your work in that regard and you can have a transformative breakthrough. It's also a really good energy to socialize as well. Venus likes socializing. It likes, you know, interacting with others. It's not the social energy that we would see, say, with Gemini or Aquarius. But look, Libra rules, sorry, Venus rules Libra, obviously now. Um, and so there is that, that refined social connection, going out for dinner, um, going to a sort of more sophisticated party, or just meeting up for a coffee with friends. You know, it's really good under this energy, that sophisticated Libra connectivity that Venus rules is very much blessed. Socializing is blessed under this energy too. Now, as I've also mentioned, We've got this beautiful little sex style coming from Pluto. What does this actually mean for us? Well, we get an amplification of power coming out of this new moon and all the things I've talked about are going to be amplified in the most benevolent way because of Pluto's aspect here. So our power in these realms, you know, in the romantic realm, in the creative realm, in the spiritual realm increased because of this and also our courage in these areas and our ability to take risks in these areas is also amplified. There's an intense focus on these things, creativity, spirituality, healing um, and and love, as I said. So we have more of an intense focus on there now and we have a more a, a power to create more control over those aspects of our lives that, that can bring us joy ultimately. So really use this energy because Pluto, as I said, is the energy of transformation to transform your soul, to rehabilitate your life related to those, those main four realms of Pisces, Neptune energy, spirituality, healing, love and creativity. I would also encourage you to look at, okay, well, where does Scorpio fall in your chart? The sign of Scorpio. 
because that is the realm of life and if you're familiar with house placements then you'll know what house Scorpio governs for you um, the house of Scorpio is ruled by Pluto and that is where you can really transform your life under this new moon because of this beneficial aspect from the new moon all about new beginnings turning over new leaves making new intentions and what have you it's in the sign of Scorpio that you can transform and change because Pluto is going to be activated as the ruler of Scorpio in everyone's chart in that way let me give you an example maybe we can use this um, this particular chart this puts because if you're an Aries rising Scorpio is in the eighth house so it would be in eighth house realms that you might be transformed suddenly a secret might come out that sets you free eighth house is secrets and Pluto governs the eighth house of secrets making uh, getting this beautiful sextile aspect from the new moon there might be a secret that comes out that transforms your life so that's just one example you'd need to know where and I'm not going to go into it for everyone or I'll be here for 24 hours explaining but um, where does Scorpio fall that is where you have the potential under this new moon to be liberated or transformed um, for the for the good in some manner now I want to talk about some rituals for the sign of uh, new moon rather in Pisces I need to start out by saying that the new moon time is never a good time to set intentions and that is contrary to what you'll hear from most astrologers who perhaps aren't working in truth with the moon energy because the moon is hidden the moon is lost in the glare of the Sun the moon's a manifesting planet how can we manifest our intentions when the moon is not even visible in the sky it is not the time for setting intentions it is actually a preparatory time getting ready to set our intentions it's a very important time and not to be overlooked just the same so what we can do during this time is purge it is a great time and you'll get this in the your PDF that, that you're going to receive really good for detox really good for cleanses juice fasts that sort of thing and flushing out any toxins from the body it's supported under the, the energy when the moon is dark so perhaps on this uh, this this new moon is taking place on the 13th so on the 12th start a, a three-day cleanse if you can you know, juice fast or something now see your doctor I'm not a medical practitioner I don't know your personal circumstances so do see your doctor if you are concerned about fasting um, over this three-day period maybe you might like to just do a, you know a 12-hour fast or something instead if that's you feel that's all you can do but anything is good you know flushing out the system actually it gets rid of the toxins out of the body but it also kind of draws us into addressing our soul wounds as well and we can flush them out too with this energy so perfect for releasing things from the body and for releasing things from the psyche do that work now I'll give you a ritual that I use to sort of support me in releasing old habits old patterns um, and things that I feel might be coming through from my past life experiences that I want to let go of I'll give you um, an example of what to do for that what I do is I will write down whatever the issue is and let's say I've got an issue with um, you know a sweet tooth for example and I just can't stop eating chocolate every day and so I'll write down I've got this issue with needing a sweet tooth okay so that that cleanse that juice fast that's gonna help cleanse me of that in the physical and then I also make the intention to release um, you know toxic toxic needs toxic thinking from um, my eating habits as well that's an example you could have anything it could be to do with relationships it could be to do with self-sabotaging it could be to do with fears that you have um, old hatreds that just you can't let go of whatever it is that you're clinging to that needs to go now is the time to do it so you write these issues down on a piece of paper with the intention fully full intention of I don't want this in my life anymore I want this gone write it down and no clinging no clinging allowed then I roll the paper up 
and I tie it with a red cord that I've purchased for this just such an occasion as this each month. Um, it's a piece of uh, just a, a piece of ribbon that I they got at a fabric store. Um, so I tie my little piece of paper with a, a red cord or red ribbon or whatever I have um, that's red because you know red is the color connected with self empowerment, self realization, and that's really what we're wanting to do here. We're wanting to empower ourselves through letting go of what doesn't serve us. So we roll it up tight with the red cord for self-realization, knowing that, hey, I've realized I'm a bit addicted to sugar and I've got to do something about it. We say a prayer of releasing, and that can be any prayer. You know, you, you make up what feels right to you. Maybe you might like to write it down. And then we burn the paper and we burn the cord. Now make sure you're somewhere safe when you do that. Don't sort of do it on the carpet in the middle of the living room. <laughs> Go outside or wherever it's safe and burn your little piece of paper with its cord and watch it sort of dissolve into ashes. And once it's done that, gather up the ashes and you go and bury those ashes in your garden or in a pot plant or somewhere earthy. When you do that, you're actually, it's very beneficial under this new moon because you're actually drawing on the power of Pluto to compost, to dissolve and take down into the underworld where it's going to be transmuted. This problem that you have, this deep psychological wound or this thing that needs to be flushed and cleared from your system. So this is, new moon is the best time for releasing and letting go of blockages because we're not clinging, we're not manifesting, we're not holding on to something and we can let it go much easier. So this is our preparatory work and once that is done, the cleansing and releasing is complete, we are now ready to look at setting intentions. And we do this once the moon appears in the sky and begins waxing. And this is going to happen on the 15th. Now, these are Australian dates. Work with them as you will. There are uh, a number of uh, apps and what have you online that will show you when the moon is becoming, uh, you know, being seen again. So um, in your part of the world, but where I am, it's on the 15th. I think in most parts of the world, it's actually going to be on the 15th this time around. But if you're using this ceremony in other months of the year, when you're having other new moons, double check um, when the moon is becoming visible. That indicates the moon is waxing and starting to grow, beginning again, beginning its cycle afresh. So on the 15th, that is when we do our ritual or our ceremony or just whatever you want to call it for setting intentions that we want to see manifest in the coming weeks. So this is where we make a wish or we use that Pisces theme of what dreams do we want to see come true. Now the color that is associated with Pisces and even Neptunian energy is lavender or purple. And so get yourself a lavender or purple candle light the candle and focus on the flame. This is on the 15th, remember. As you do, as you go into that state of peace, you know what it's like when you sort of, you go into, I guess it's a trance when you're observing a candle and you just get lost in the flame. Well, you're kind of in that state of meditation with the candle, okay? And then you write down your wish. What is your wish? And continue meditating on the flame. So purple candles are actually very, they invoke um, the energy of meditation, psychic ability, I'm going to read these here, intuition, vision, they invoke the ability to do past life work, to have spiritual awakening, um, to also to tap into power because if you've noticed most royal robes are purple, you know the coronation robe of the queen and that sort of thing. It's purple. Um, and purple is associated with Jupiter, the royal energy, the king of the gods, and Jupiter rules Pisces. So there is power also in a purple candle. Royalty and command also exists in a purple candle as well. And, and so using this purple candle brings in these sorts of energies to your sphere as you meditate on it. And then read aloud your wish. Once you've written it down and continued to meditate on the candle, then I would encourage you as part of this ceremony to repeat the following mantra. Mantra literally means in translation from Sanskrit to transport us to another place with our thoughts. And that's what we're doing here. We are going to a different place through our mind work. 
So mantra, uh, this mantra is really encouraging us to get into the, the manifestation mode with our brain. Um, so say this as many times as you need to, to be able to incite that feeling of oneness with what you're talking about. So this is the mantra. My dreams are coming true easily and effortlessly. My dreams are coming true in perfect timing. Make that your mantra as you um, meditate on the candle, say it as many times as you need to integrate that energy and to feel at one with the energy, to feel that it is true for you. If it takes you a hundred times before you feel like, yep, this is real, then do it a hundred times. If it takes you two, do it two times, whatever works for you. And then you simply snuff out the candle. Don't blow it out, snuff it out because apparently it's not good juju to blow a candle out. It's better to quench the candle. Um, take your wish, put it under your pillow and simply sleep with it under your pillow for the next month till the next new moon, knowing that the universe has heard your prayer, heard your mantra and attuned with your energy. So I hope you enjoyed that. I don't I know that not everybody is into sort of the rituals and the, the spell work, if you want to call it that, um, that, w that is about working with moon energy, but a lot of people are. So take it or leave it. You can sort of ignore it if it's not your thing. And I hope it's brought some support and some strength to people through the ri this ritual and ceremony. But now let's take a look at what is happening astrologically for each sign. So with the new moon in Pisces, Pisces becomes the realm in which we can see manifestation over the next month where our wishes and prayers can come true and our dreams and prayers can be answered. So we're going to take a look at that for all signs. It's also an indicator of where you might get a new start in the coming month. Let's start with Aries because that's where we happen to have fallen. I'll just take that off. For Aries, then we're having the new moon fall in the 12th house. And so this is where you can see your wishes and dreams come true. Maybe you have a wish for more creative expression or a, or a stronger connection to the divine, to, to your spiritual self, uh, your higher self even. And you felt maybe a bit lackluster over the last little while with a bit ambiguous about your spiritual life, a bit sort of not in the zone with it. This is a time when you can make wishes for that to be re reinvigorated and the new moon can bring it about for you. It's also possible for Aries people that you can get a new start and this is very significant for you guys because you can have a new start with some past life issue. So it is entirely possible for an Aries person or moon or sun sign as well as the rising Aries sign. It's entirely possible that someone from your past from a past life previous incarnation may enter into your world and you get a new start to begin a life with them or a new opportunity to sort of invigorate something with them. Because this is the house of past lives and so people from past lives can come back and enter suddenly into our life in order for us to maybe resolve past life issues and heal past life issues or get a chance to you know, revisit something in a past life that, that we didn't get the chance to do back then. So, you know, let's say you, I don't know, were alive during the, the First World War and you were a, a woman at that time and you married a guy just as he had to head out. You had one night together and then he headed off to the front and you never saw him again. So you never had the chance to live life together even though he was your soulmate. Well, who knows? This energy could bring that soldier back into your life <laughs> where you might find um, a, a chance to make a new start and have a life together. So in that sense, there's things from the past that come can come back and that you will get a brand new start with. In perhaps a more tangible realm, you might get new starts with creativity. You might get an option to do a photography exhibition or do some film work or create some sort of costumes or something like that. 
all that creative illusionary stuff that is very 12th house. So in that sense, you might get a new start with a project that's very creative. You might get a new start in a foreign land, in a foreign culture or country, or in a faraway place. You might get the chance to have a new start in some place that's a bit isolated, a bit removed, where you can tap out for a bit and get your bearings you know, back from harsh reality if that's your inclination to do so. So there's a few great... Um, energies that come through with this new moon in the 12th house that could be very invigorating for you Aries rising sun or moon people Taurus Taurus rising sun or moon people well we're going to see this energy of the new moon falling for you in the 11th house and this is where your prayers and dreams and wishes can come true perfect because this is the house of our dreams and goals and aspirations so you can see these come to fruition now when we have a new moon in the 11th house which is lovely of course what are your wishes what are your dreams what are your goals here they can manifest for you they're going to be particularly strong if your goals are very charitable and humanitarian they're very um maybe community oriented a bit utopian those kinds of things will be very much supported with pisces as your 11th house it's also where you might get a brand new start emerging. Now that might look for you like a new start, like a whole new goal, a whole new set of dreams and aspirations that you can now work with. You know, your old ones, you're sort of done and dusted with those. Pisces is an energy, a bit like the 12th house where we lose something and we dissolve something and let something go. And so there might be a letting go of some old dreams, some old aspiration that no longer fits with the life you're living and so you create a new goal a new dream that comes out of this a fresh start you might get new friendships coming into your life too here in the 11th house a new friend might enter your world maybe a new social group connection might also come your way and it's likely that they'll be very spiritual or spiritually based people because of the Neptune influence in this particular um, configuration. So expect that you will have the chance to make new friendships of a spiritual nature um, under this new moon, which could be truly lovely. You may also get to be involved in systems, big extended systems that also have either a creative base, a healing base, a spiritual base. You know, you might join an online group chat with um, a philosophically inclined theme you know talking about spiritual insights or something like that or you might join some sort of big interconnected group that loves to create you know like a what would we call them what are they called those big dance groups uh, uh, flash mobs or something like that um, a, a group that wants to sort of bring joy and creativity to the world through their group endeavors you might find that you you join some sort of collective effort like that and of course Pisces and Neptune and Venus all together and with this new moon are connected to themes of dancing so hey go for it you might even go learn to do a new dance in some way but really it's going to be in a group collective type environment when this is falling in your 11th house so if you happen to be Gemini Gemini rising Sun or moon oh you guys now have Mars in your sign which obviously I think for you is going to be really really lovely I'm just gonna hold you there um, having Mars I mean Mars is not super I talked about this last week but not super strong in the sign of Gemini but still it's going to give you Gemini rising people a lot more energy a lot more oomph a lot more aliveness which you may have felt was lacking when Mars was moving through Taurus but that's not what we're here to talk about today we are looking at the new moon and it is falling in your 10th house so this is where your wishes and dreams can come true now where you can pray and see answers of course this is the 10th house it has to do with career it has to do with worldly success worldly visibility recognition reputation and the ability to create and leave something of value for people when you're gone the legacy that we create is the 10th house so what do you wish for in your career it's a time to explore that and maybe do ceremony as I said in the intro all about those things 
What what are your dreams? What are your wishes with career? Maybe you want to uh, be the next Oprah Winfrey. Well, maybe you get a chance to take another step forward in the trajectory towards that goal. Maybe you want to be able to have a, um, a wellness retreat somewhere and you want to you know, create that, that property and, you know, and then maybe you find the right property because it's part of your overall, not that this is the house of property, although the moon is where we live and it's there. Okay. Part of this connection and the moon with Neptune very much is all about a utopian society or a wellness retreat kind of place, like totally that kind of thing. You might find the right property because it's part of your overall um, career aspiration to have something like that. So these sorts of things can happen. They're obviously very big things that I've talked about. It might just be that you have wanted to join with that team and work on that project at work and you get the chance. You know, you get a chance. The universe helps your dream, your wish to come true in that regard too. Um, it also it represents where we can get a brand new start. So you might, for some people, you might get a new career opportunity or a new career project. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to lose your job and then have to find a new one. You know, it's not talking about that sort of new start. Um, it is talking more about uh, the chance to turn over a new leaf. So maybe you've been doing the same old, same old career for ages and it's ho-hum, so bored with it. And along comes a new moon in your career sector and you have the opportunity to reinvent yourself. Remember, Pluto aspecting this is going to give us the chance to transform what we are doing in any career realm. So we might get the chance to inject some new life back into that career or do a project that actually really invigorates us and intrigues us at work or maybe we um, you know we run our own business and we introduce a new topic or a new uh, product that we want to promote or something happens where we get some you know an injection of adrenaline into what we're doing as a part of our worldly career and aspirations and the legacy that we're hoping to leave. So this is very exciting and you get a brand new start. You might also get a brand new start with some sort of authority figure or a father-like figure because this is the house, the realm that has to do with those things. So, you know, you, you might get a, a chance to renew your reputation with your boss or um, to reconnect with your father or to reinvigorate because Pluto is reinvigorating, of course, this new moon, um, some dynamic with a... Um, a a person of wisdom and of knowledge and, and somebody who has a, an elite level of understanding of some area and not necessarily a teacher but somebody that you revere as a, an, an authority in a particular subject and you get the chance to reinvigorate a relationship with a person like that. So new starts abound in 10th house areas for Gemini people. Now for Cancer people the energy of the new moon is falling for you guys in the ninth house. So ninth house is where the new moon is falling for you. And this is where your wishes and dreams and prayers can be answered and can come true for you with this magical new moon in Pisces. So you might have a, an aspiration to study something uh, or a desire to learn something or understand some theory that has eluded you. You know, maybe you've always wanted to be able to channel Pisces is the energy of channeling, but you can't get your head around it because, you know, the ninth house is our philosophical understanding of spirituality, whereas Pisces energy is very much like the, just the divine flowing through us. So it's like the two can combine now under this new moon energy, and you might have the philosophical understanding of what channeling is and the energy of the divine begins to flow through you and express through you through some sort of channeling you might do a course in channeling there's plenty of good stuff online to learn to do channeling there's plenty of good stuff online to learn any sort of spiritual practice you know um tantra uh tantra yoga like uh, energy healing um quigong you know i could go on and on but here we're going to get the un the spiritual understanding in our mind as well as the experience through the ethereal realms. And so if you have aspired to understand or know any of those sorts of things in the past, then this new moon is a great energy to see that manifest for you, um, to, to come to grips with other belief systems and particularly of the ethereal sort. 
Now also it's a time when you guys may just move because this energy can indicate a move is on the cards and in this particular um, house, the ninth house, it's about foreign cultures. So you're getting all this amped up energy saying foreign cultures, faraway places, isolated places, being in a different environment. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to go live permanently in a different environment, although some of you might. It may mean that you get a chance to visit some faraway place, some isolated place, some other culturally aligned place, and you get the chance to say spend a week there or go for a weekend or something like that. And you learn and you grow and you expand through that experience because the ninth house is all about the growth and expansion of our soul and our mind and our heart. So you get the chance to do that through actually physically experiencing and living in the moon in another place uh, around this time. So that's something that can come true for a lot of people as well. And other people might get the chance to see their wishes and dreams come true with their academic learning. This is a very academic house, a very intelligent house, and very much um, to do with our uh, what we're developing to move forward in life. If you think about the ninth house, it's connected to the imagery of the archer, which is always got his arrow pointed off in the distance, fires it away and then gallops after it to go collect his arrow and move ahead to his next goal and dream. And that's what, because the ninth house is associated with university, that's why we have this connection. Because university is about being with your arrow ready to, you know, this is my goal. I'm going to finish university, get this degree. Then I pick up my arrow and go out into the workforce, fire my arrow and build my career and then pick up my arrow and go and be the CEO. And, you know, it, it's, it's about taking steps forward to expand our lives in some way and university and higher learning and um, knowledge and pre-qualifying is all a very ninth house type of energy and so you might have aspirations to learn to pre-qualify to get your certificate in a certain realm and that can actually manifest as you know you might get enrolled in the course you want or see that you know get the degree that you want manifest under this energy wishes dreams in that area and prayers in that area can actually come true too it's also a place where you might get a new start Again, you might get a new start in another country or a foreign environment or in a more isolated retreat-like place. Um, you might get a new start with uh, perhaps new spiritual mentors, people who inspire you, people who you revere, people who are philanthropists or um, you know benefactors to you in some way. And you might get a brand new start with somebody of that nature in your world. You might get a brand new start with a new course, with a new career, with, not career, sorry, with a new university degree or doing some certificate program, you know, you might get a chance to do one of my courses online, which would fit this bill. Um, and, you know, really get a, a fresh start in life because of this new piece of study that you're undertaking at a high level. So there's some of the expressions that we're seeing with the new moon falling in the sign of Pisces, your ninth house. Now, Leo, Leo rising, sun or moon people. We're seeing this energy of the new moon fall in your eighth house. And so this is where you can see um, dreams coming true now, prayers being answered and wishes manifesting for you, as I spoke about in the introduction. What is eighth house? Well, it is a house of, well, other people's values. So you might have a desire for someone to appreciate you, someone to value you, someone to acknowledge you. And you might see that manifest now under this energy because this is the house of other people's values. So that could be really lovely if that's something that you've aspired to. You might also see your wishes and dreams coming true with regard to the use of some sort of community property. This, this is the house of um, the belongings of other people or, um, and so you know maybe a community hall for a yoga class you want to run suddenly it comes true and there you go you've got your yoga class up and running maybe you you want to um, hire a, a, an exhibition building and host a uh, you know a spiritual you know practitioners weekend workshop 
event or something and you get the chance so these are just some ideas but some sort of community property and your desires or needs or longings around some sort of community property can actually manifest for you now under the this beautiful new moon as long as you you know you're setting your intentions for those sorts of things the universe can hear and answer it's also a, um, the realm of the chart that has to do with healing through therapy. And we talked in the intro about how important that is with a Pisces emphasis, miraculous healing. And so you're kind of getting a combination of the best of both um, energies for creating healing. The eighth house is healing through deep psychological introspection, um, energy healing, working with the chakras and um, you know the energy body. And doing that sort of work can be very, very healing at the same time as you've got a new moon in the sign of Pisces. So not only energy healing in the body, but the psychological healing and the past life healing through maybe regression work or some sort of spiritual shaman, shamanic practice can give you a brand new start can help you turn over a new leaf under this energy and you might find that if you long to be healed from some affliction or some you know i'm a leo sun you know i can think of quite a few sort of past life um karmic loops that i'm caught in mentally that i would love to see let go of now is my time because i can be miraculously healed of that i can be transformed from that both psychologically and its effects in my physical life as well so you can get a brand new start and a miraculous healing through working with this energy, setting intentions to be released and doing the work. So very exciting. And I would encourage you, because this is so strong for you, Leo people, I would really encourage you to, if you're into it, pay attention to what I spoke about in terms of the rituals and ceremony um, that we can do. And they're just fancy names. It's really just little procedures that you can do to sort of attune your mind to healing to releasing, to ushering in the new manifestation that you want. So check that out because I think you guys could really, more than perhaps any other sign, maybe Aries might be the other sign to benefit, um, but more than any other sign, you, you guys really have the chance to benefit and grow through this new moon and be healed through this new moon. Okay, so now we want to look at Virgo rising sun or moon people. Well, you're getting the chance for prayers and dreams and wishes coming true now in your seventh house. And of course, this has to do with partnerships and relationships and also contracts. So let's say maybe you've had a dream or a wish or a prayer for um, a, a virtual assistant to help you with your, your work. Or maybe you want a, a social media moderator or someone to come in and give you a hand or you know whatever it is. Maybe you need extra hands at work or someone to clean your house because you just don't have time anymore. And so you can arrange contracts. Now somebody comes into your life to help you work with the everyday things that you need. And you can have a contract with that person for their cleaning work or for their social media management or something like that. People can come into your life who are going to help you do your work. Because Virgo is a very work-oriented sign, let's face it. They are often very hard workers, very, very diligent and dutiful. Um, and sometimes, you know, we all need a hand. Even Virgo people who are so competent and, you know, do things to the nth degree very, very well. Um, sometimes even, <laughs> even Virgo people need a hand. And here you can meet the right person to help you uh, with your work. Um, and, and this is usually going to be a contractual type position. It's not just that somebody puts their hands up and says, oh yeah, I'll cook you dinner tonight. No, it's, it's about people contracting to you and to collaborate with you in some way. So these sorts of people that you may need in your life can manifest now under this energy. Also, most romantically under this particular new moon, which we talked about in the intro, for Neptune, uh, sorry, for Virgo people, you can find that maybe a, a new love, a new commitment of a, of a love relationship type comes into your life now. Or you might renew and reinvigorate because remember, we're going, we've got a sextile from Pluto, the planet of transformation and renewal. Um, you might reinvigorate a, an existing relationship that needed a bit of an injection of life again. So this looks really lovely for 
all you Virgo people who are in partnership or looking for partnership. Remember, if you are looking for partnership, you need a few things going on in your personal chart. You might want to check out my um, my course on when will love come it will tell you what to look for in your chart to know when love is coming um, and this new moon could actually if it's combining with a few of those triggers that you need this new moon could be just the icing on the cake to bring something in for you you can also make a fresh start with um, with contracts with you know start a fresh contract you, you you know write up and draw up a new contract with somebody if you need to um, create some sort of new like I said relationship but even invigorating old relationships the new moons always represent new starts new beginnings turning over a new leaf with something relational or contractual here as well so for Libra rising or Sun or Moon people the energy of the new moon is falling for you in your sixth house and this is yeah this is an interesting place to be having the new moon fall because this is where your wishes and dreams and prayers can come true now you Libran people actually have a great opportunity with this to change your life or to change the world too because now whatever you pray about that is problematic in the world your prayers can be answered, your prayers can be heard. So maybe you're struggling with debt. Maybe you're struggling with potentially a health issue. Maybe you're struggling um, with a, a lack of education. Or if it's not you, you observe, oh, there's these poor people that they just can't get a break in life because they haven't been given the opportunity to get the education they need to make something of themselves. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to put a wish on a lucky star for them. For people who are disadvantaged in life in some way maybe they're in a war-torn country or maybe they're in a, a country with famine or they're you know going through poverty experiences it doesn't have to be in another country there's plenty of it happening even in um in first world countries that is even still the case although it's sort of swept under the rug and we don't see it as much unfortunately i mean not unfortunate that we that it's um it is unfortunate that it's happening um it's unfortunate that it's swept under the rug and we're kept ignorant about a lot of the poverty and the disease and struggle that um, is even present in western countries particularly after covid i might add as well um back to the task at hand <laughs> the sixth house is actually a healing house when we're manifesting things at the highest level and to pray and to as i said in the intro to give over our concerns and fears to the divine is what this new moon is all about so if there is a struggle if there is a court case if there is a problem if there is some piece of imbalance in your life or in the world that you observe pray about it and give it over to the divine at this time knowing that the divine will heal here potentially heal or answer in its own perfect timing and it's about if you listen to the intro it's all about trusting that as well so that's where our wishes and prayers and dreams can come true. We can also make a brand new start under this new moon too. That might mean with our diet, um, especially as uh, new moon is a great time to cleanse and then make a new beginning. Um, again, I talked about that in the intro. Um, but also fresh start, turning over a new leaf to do with um, exercise routine, health, just daily organization, being able, you know, fresh start with how you're cleaning your house or what you're cooking each each night for dinner that is it healthy or is it not or does it make a huge mess or whatever. You can make a fresh start with, with cooking as seen by the sixth house. A fresh start with your work endeavors and your attitude to work and your enthusiasm for work can make a fresh start as well. So maybe a fresh start with your colleagues or your employees. Um, if you're a, a workplace employer, maybe um, a fresh start with your subordinates in some other, like if you're a team manager or something like that. Um, so you can really make a fresh start, look to do so, look for ways that you can reinvigorate. And remember, Pluto is making this beautiful little sextile that's going to be allowing us to transform and regenerate and rebirth things that maybe haven't been working so well, in this case, in the sixth house realm. 
Now, for Scorpio rising, sun or moon people, the energy of this new moon is falling for you in the fifth house. And so this is a lovely placement to, have, to be having a new moon. This is where your wishes and prayers and dreams can manifest and come true now if we hand them over to the divine. So you might have a, a wish for your children. You might have a some sort of prayer for your children. And you know, now hand that over to the divine. The divine will hear and answer when the timing is right. Um, you might also have in the fifth house a, a dream or desire for some creative self-expression. You know, you really wish you had a studio so that you could set up all your art painting pieces or your sewing studio or whatever it is that you desire. And, you know, you can sort of pray for the what you need, the opportunity to do your hobby or your interest or your creative expression in a good environment and the universe can hear and answer. You might want more fun in your life, more joy in your life. This is a fifth house thing. And so praying and handing it over to the divine, now is the time we do that. We can see our wishes come true. This is also a house of celebrity. Now, if you have the right configurations in your chart to manifest celebrity, <laughs> um, and that's something that you want out of your life, you can gain a lot of popularity now because of this conjunction of the moon and Neptune um, in this new moon configuration. Very, very powerful time for amping up your popularity um, in terms of another step towards the celebrity status you might desire. Also, as we know, house of love and romance. So prayers and dreams regarding love and romance will be heard by the divine now and can be answered when the timing is right. I will just point out for Scorpio people, I have recently done a, an instructional um, masterclass on the timing of relationships and figuring out when that's happening. So um, with all this going on down here in your fifth house of love and romance, you might enjoy <laughs> looking at that course and seeing whether you have all the triggers that are lining up to manifest love in your life alongside this very romantic new moon in the house of love and romance. So it could be really good for you if all the stars are aligning. It's also where we're going to get a new start. You might get a new start with love, turn over a new leaf, decide I'm not going to do it that way any longer. From now on, this is who I'm going to be when it comes to love and romance. You might get a new start with your children, a chance to turn over a new leaf, a chance to begin afresh with your children. And look, I did that when I was raising my little kids many times. You know, I'd, I'd yell at them and then feel bad. And then I'd be like, okay, from now on, we're going to be a family that, you know, always eats dinner together. And we ask about each other's day and we have conversation around the dinner table. No more yelling and crying over the burnt sausages, you know. <laughs> so new fresh start with, you know, your you children, um, with your lovers, with the romantic life, with a hobby, with an interest, with the opportunity and potential to be creatively expressive as well. So good times for Scorpio people. Sagittarius rising, sun or moon people, we're going to see this energy falling for you in your fourth house. So this is where your wishes and dreams can come true now through handing them over to the universe and trusting in divine timing. This is the house of houses where we live, our home, our bricks and mortar, our community that we live in and our tribe that we belong to. So if you have some, say, some wishes or dreams to sort of have a better house or move home, um, that might actually manifest for you now because this energy with Neptune, new moon with Neptune in the house of Pisces might mean moving to a, a different environment like a foreign environment or a more reclusive kind of environment a more set apart kind of environment you Sagittarius people have a, a bit of a longing um, because of Pisces is your fourth house to sort of maybe live by the ocean or maybe sort of be a bit more removed from um, yeah the sort of the main hustle and bustle because Pisces likes to be uh, a, a sort of a bit separate a bit more isolated or ends up being a bit more a separate and isolated. So that could be the case. Of course, it could be different depending on whether you have your IC in Aquarius or Aries or Pisces. Um, that might manifest a little differently for you depending on that manifestation point. But 
generally speaking, um, Sagittarius people enjoy being in those sorts of environments to reside, to live. You know what? We can live in a city and still be a bit isolated. You know, we can have a, a house that's a bit more set back from the main drag, you know, than everybody else on the street. And that's very much the kind of environment that we would be looking for. So here you might get, like I said, some dreams coming true with a property, with property development, with where you live, with moving house, with maybe even uh, developing a garden because Neptune is um, rules farmers and this is the house connected to gardening so you might grow start growing some vegetables in your backyard or some carrots on the windowsill or something like that um, and if that's something you've aspired to and you've dreamed of I wish I could just have space to be a self-sufficient grow my own veggies well this is the time when that energy could manifest for you um, some people will see it manifest on a large scale, some on a, a much smaller scale depending on how this is playing out in your own chart but some people that might have been aspiring to, you know, buy a self-sufficient farm under this new moon. It could actually manifest for you. Some people might have been aspiring to get that window box from Bunnings, and which is a hardware store in Australia, um, and fill it with dirt and put in those strawberry plants. You know, that might have been their aspiration. Either way, it's a fourth house thing. Um, and some big scale, some small scale. The other thing is um, we might get a brand new start with the fourth house. It's a brand new start with a home, you know, so, oh, we made a mess of that garden bed. Let's rip it all out and start all over again. We might get a brand new start with our mother or a maternal figure or some sort of uh, family lineage. We get to sort of start afresh, turn over a new leaf with those types of people, with our family. And that includes our children and our partner and our parents and family, you know, that intimate blood connected community that we have. Because this is the house that rules those people. So a fresh start, a brand new start is available to us. Again, give it over to the divine. Let the divine work out what it needs to in order to allow that new start to come in if that's something that you would feel you need. So for you Sagittarian people, fresh starts available for family and home and your heritage, your roots and your lineage can get a fresh start as well in some way too. So the next sign we want to have a look at is Capricorn. Capricorn rising sun or moon people. Well, this energy is falling. This energy is falling for you in the third house. And this is where you can see your wishes and prayers and dreams start to manifest for you now if you give it over to the divine and allow the divine to bring it about in its own right timing. And so this is the third house of siblings. Maybe you have a wish or a dream to reconnect with a sibling. And um, the the sextile to Pluto will give you a chance to perhaps regenerate a relationship with a sibling, um, maybe with a neighbor, with a relative of some description. You might get a chance to renew something there and reinvigorate and transform that type of relationship under this new moon. You might have a wish or a dream or a prayer to um, to do some sort of uh, new side venture or create money through your own skills and abilities, which is a third house endeavor, to share information, to learn information, um, to host a workshop essentially is what I'm saying there, to host a workshop, to, to start a website, to launch some kind of uh, you know, new campaign of advertising or marketing, all of these things, admin are very third house related. And so you might have an aspiration or a wish or a dream that you can give over to the universe for your new business to flourish and thrive, uh, for your advertising campaign to actually bring in the, the new people that you want um, to connect with the right people. You might have a, a wish or a prayer to get the right people into the workshop that you're going to host. All of these things, now's the time to give them over to the universe, knowing that it will hear and answer and wishes can come true under this, this new moon energy. It's all the, also a time when we can get a brand new start in these realms too. Maybe you're sick of your old website and it's, you know, circa 2004 and you're like, oh my goodness, it's so clunky and out of date. It's time I really brought it into the modern world. So you get a reinvigoration and a new start with your website and get a new website host and a new design and all that cool stuff. 
that's very much third house is our communications and websites are one way that we communicate maybe you get a fresh start you just decide you're going to start a uh, doing an email list and you start emailing people on a regular basis with all your news and information and what have you maybe you get a fresh start with um you know a neighbor uh, and you, you've been at loggerheads together, but you decide, you know, let's let's lay it to rest. Let bygones be bygones. Come over for a barbecue and let's try and patch things up. You get the chance to turn over a new leaf and establish some fresh start with a neighbor. So this is what we're seeing for um, the new moon falling in the sign of Pisces for Capricorn rising sun or moon people. Now for Aquarius rising sun or moon people. The energy of the new moon is falling for you in the second house. So this is where your wishes and prayers and dreams can come true. Maybe you have aspired to run a podcast for a long time. Should I? Shouldn't I? What would I talk about? Would I have enough things to have a topic to spiel on about for every month or whatever you're going to do? Um, this is a time when you can get that coming true and you can decide I'm going to do this and everything lines up and the universe pats you on the back and says, yeah, yeah, go for it. Do that podcast because this is the house of using the voice. So anywhere you might use your voice, maybe doing some public speaking, maybe doing some singing, maybe hosting that podcast, like I said, or running a radio show or something at the local community radio, whatever, you can get the, the chance to see your wishes and dreams come true now if it involves using your voice in some way, but also using your face. That's a second house thing too. If you want to use your face, I mean, you know, um, Elvis was someone who had a strong second house. He, what did he do? He used his face as well as a lot of other things <laughs> to get him um, seen and, and popular. And he was very handsome. So, you know, it worked in his favor. But you can use your face now to help your wishes, your dreams, your goals um, be answered and give, give things over to the universe. Maybe you want to do a Phil Dumphy and, you know, put your face on a park bench um, and so to generate interest with what you're um, wanting to sell some real estate or something like that. Well, you might get the chance. You might see a vacant park bench and think, hey, I could put my face on there and advertise my real estate business. So go for it. You know, opportunities and answers to prayer can come regarding the face and regarding the voice and how you may wish to utilize those things in the world. It's also obviously the house of our resources for living because it sits under the house of the body and supports it. And what supports our body? Having resources, having food, having shelter, having clothing, having a bit of money in the bank and enough to make life more comfortable, safe and secure, which are very much second house things. So your dreams and goals and aspirations, um, the wishes that you give over in prayer or meditation to the universe now along those lines, you know, I want more clothes or I need a bigger house or I want more food in my pantry or I'd like a pay rise, you know, those sorts of things about our resources for living can actually be heard and answered by the universe now in the universe's perfect timing, of course. This is also where we might get a brand new start as Aquarius people as well. So when we've got a brand new start happening in the second house, yes, it applies to resources. You might get a brand new car. You might get a brand new, well, it might be brand new, but it might be new to you, you know, a <laughs> new car. Um, you might get a, you know, a, just a new dress. You might get a, some new shoes. You might get, a, you know, try a new dish at the local Indian restaurant or something like that, you know, you get the chance to do something new, something fresh when we have a new beginning, new moon in the second house. But it's also the house of our personal values, how we value ourselves and what we value in the world. So you might get a chance to have a fresh start with your sense of self worth, how you value yourself, how you honor yourself. So maybe you've been really down on yourself lately, like, oh, I, whenever I try, I always fail and nothing ever goes right for me and I suck and those terrible mental loops that we can get, you know, stuck in uh, on occasion and it happens to all of us, doesn't it? But um, as we get older, let me just say, I found that those mental loops get less and less and less. Thank you. <laughs> if we do the work, of course, if we do the work. But here with this new moon, you're really supported now in making a fresh start to rid yourself of some of those mental loops that keep your sense of self-worth at a low place. 
So you might like to, you know, do some work, do some, because this is Pisces, this is about therapy and healing through art therapy, music therapy, dance therapy, all those therapy, therapy, therapies, um, things that you can do to help you get back in touch and know who you are. And I spoke about this in the intro. It's a good time for doing that. And in doing so, what's going to happen for Aquarius people is they're going to discover their true value, their true worth and be um, enhanced through that realization illuminated sun here as well illuminating your sense of self-worth your sense of self-value um, through you know doing some therapy and laying some things to rest so I'd encourage you guys to really look into doing that kind of thing under this energy because it's only going to be in your favor okay so for Pisces and this is our last sign Pisces, rising sun or moon people. Well, hello, Pisces. We've got it in our first house this time. And so it's in this realm. Oh, I've got goosebumps all of a sudden. Oh, what is that telling me? <laughs> that this is where our wishes and dreams can come true. What are your wishes and dreams? You know, this is a very self-actualized house, the first house. So what are your dreams for yourself? You can pray now, you can, you know, meditate, give them over to the universe and the universe can answer and will answer when the timing is right. It's about trusting, as I said in the intro, in divine timing. Maybe this is a house of new beginnings, first house, new starts. Maybe you want a whole new start in life with everything, new career, new house, new job, new love, new everything. And maybe you want a brand new start. Well, maybe if you've got the right configurations going on in your natal chart, this might be exactly what occurs for you. Brand new start, brand new turning over a new leaf in everything. But it also might give you the impetus to initiate something new. You know, you might desire to establish something new. That can happen for you now. For Pisces people, you might find that you are suddenly really popular now because the moon and Neptune coming together um, in, in this new moon energy can be an energy of popularity that comes through spiritual work. Um, maybe you've been doing, I don't know, hosting a spiritual podcast or something like that and suddenly, boom, takes off, goes off like a rocket because popularity comes to you with the new moon conjunct Neptune and conjunct Venus. It can also manifest you love now as well because Venus, as we said in the intro, Venus conjunct Neptune is the ro most romantic day of the year um, and we're having that fall at, a, at the same time as we're having the new moon, new starts in romance and love. It's all great. All this is coming to you because the new moon is falling in your first house. That means it. the promise of the new moon comes to you. You don't need to go out and make it happen. It arrives in your lap. So I love this energy for Pisces people. There's just so much promise here in so many realms of life. Remember that we also have this beautiful sextile coming from Pluto that can transform for Pisces people as well. It might transform you. Pisces new moon with a sextile from Pluto. You, because of some circumstance that arrives in your life, that lands in your lap, you transform your whole life, your whole outlook, your whole sense of who you are changes and transforms. Maybe you discover more joy, more beauty, more love, more romance, all of these beautiful things. Sun is here, creative expression. Sun is our creative expression. Sun is our confidence. Moon is our emotional health. New transformative experience that comes out of whatever happens for you around this, this new moon that transforms how you see yourself, who you are, how you enjoy going through life how you thrive how you survive that's a very first house theme of course this is the house of the body as well so you might get a new start with your body maybe you know and it's not necessarily a health regime that we're looking at here that's a sixth house thing but you might decide you're going to paint your nails a brand new color that you never painted them like these things can happen subtly and they can happen big scale it all depends how the particular planetary alignments are connecting with your own natal chart at what scale these things manifest 
So it might be simply that you express your beauty in a new way, new nail polish color or a, um, a new start with a brand new hair color or hairstyle or something like that. Um, you might get a whole new wardrobe because that's part of your physical image that we give off to the world, which is a first house theme. Your, your whole presentation to the world may change. Suddenly you might find that you're more confident in your presentation, you're more self-assured, you're more um, centered in who you are and able to be you know, fully embracing of your personality and who you are without any shyness any longer. That could be one thing that happens. You turn over a new leaf with how you present to the world and how you show up in the world in some way. In that sense, it could be very empowering for Pisces people. What a joy to be having this glorious, romantic, beautiful new moon, transformative new moon occurring in our first house Pisces people. So thank you so much for joining me one and all here at my Patreon family for a look at the new moon moving through every sign, the new moon in Pisces for 2021. It's a delight to have shared this with you and I look forward to sharing another video with you very soon. I'll catch you then.